Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we are going to design an augmented reality book app just like this using Figma and After Effects. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So guys, to create this interaction, you will need three ingredients. First, you'll need a base video. I'll show you what a base video is. Second, you will need an interface that we'll be going to design in Figma. And the third is basically stitching both of them together in After Effects. So let's get started. Let me first show you quickly what a base video is. So if you can see, this is a video that I shot with my phone and it's in a 1080p resolution and in this video what I'm doing is I'm just dragging the book down and then I'm basically tapping it and I'm flipping it over and then I'm doing some imaginary swipe gestures over it and then I'm giving a thumbs up right so uh, in this video I have just taken it from my phone uh, in 1080p resolution 1920 by 1080 p resolution if you want the reference um, and in this video, what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to mimic uh, art, an interface here, uh, although it's not there right now, but I'm just trying to mimic an interface here and how will I interact with it. So to create this video, I first uh, noted down uh, on a piece of paper, I planned the entire shot and then I basically did this interaction so that I know what exactly I want to do. So you do that bit as yourself, uh, plan the interaction, what is, what is the interface that's going to look like and then shoot the video accordingly and then shoot it with your phone with your camera whatever but yeah that's a that's the easiest part of it so this will create our base layer base video for the interaction now the second part is basically creating the interaction uh, interface that we're going to patch it onto it so let's let me show you how exactly it will look like so if you know from the video so what i have done here is it's in figma right now we are in figma right now and the artboard that you see is 1080 by 1920 which is the artboard size for a standard HD resolution. Now what I have done is I have taken screenshots from my original base video where are the key moments uh, in the video. So basically if you see the, the video that I have shot uh, here, uh, there are three key moments that is happening on this. First is basically when I am tapping the video, I am tapping the book actually, sorry. And then the second is basically when I'm trying to scroll up from the book, which is basically where I want to place my reviews and I want to scroll them up. And third is basically that like interaction, the like thumbs up that I'm giving to the video. So these are my three key main targets uh, where I want the interface to switch or change to do something, right? So what I've done is I've taken screenshots of those and I have placed them on the artboards. Now, I've placed them on the artboard to understand how big and small I want my text and other interface related to the book here. So the book is the main source where I'm going to attach my interface that we're going to design in Figma. So if you see what I've done is I've just added some uh, interface to it, just some random text, uh, the name of the book, uh, the price of the book, some initial reviews. And this is, happen this is happening when I'm tapping the book. So this will be the interface. And when I'm flipping the book, this is what I want to see, like top reviews. So what I've done is I've just very simply made a component where you have an image, where you have a name, you have some stars and some reviews behind, below it and then copied it a bunch of times so it becomes like a scroll. Now if you see, I've also added a square around the entire uh, uh, interface that I've built. So this white square. So basically what I want is my uh, interaction to be limited in this one so that when I place it in After Effects alongside with my video, this is the space that it should take, right? So the entire video is 1080p, but the interface itself is slightly smaller than that. So this boundary is giving me a sense of how big my interface should be, right? So now what I've done is if you see this uh, rectangle that I've built somewhere around 830 by 520. So I have created the same sort of artboard here right now. And uh, it's the same size of artboard, um, 830 by 520. And what I have also done is I have latched on my interface that I have built on these artboards. So now what are we going to do is we are going to animate these, then record these and then export them into uh, After Effects. Okay guys, so let me break down the interaction for you. So as of you, uh, as you know, now we have created these artboards, which is the same size of this rectangle where my interface is going to be. So it's exactly the same size. We have created the artboards here now. 
So now the first thing that I want to do is when I tap on the book, uh, these information should appear. So let's first build that bit. So uh, what I've done is in frame two, I have added this text where the name of the book is there, the author, the price, um, the total reviews and stars are there. What I've done is I just copied it from frame two and I've pasted it in frame one and I have given frame one, um, this entire group as a zero pass through. Let me show you quickly. So I've given it a zero pass through now. It's 100% you can see it right now and I'll give it a zero pass through. So what will happen is when I'll add a tap trigger, uh, when I'll add a click trigger to this and this, this will actually appear from um, this screen. So it gives you that interaction of appearing when I tap on it. So let me just quickly add that interaction. So if you see it's on click. So we want that when I tap the book on click, it should navigate to this screen and smart animate. So when we do a smart animate, what will happen is it will appear fading in animation. So very nice fading in animation will also get. So this is the first thing. Let me show you how it looks like very quickly. The first screen. So this is our interface. Uh, if you see it's total black. If I click, this is the first thing that we have built and this is how it looks like. So this is how I, how we want on tapping. Now let's move on to the second interaction. The second interaction is basically when I flip the book, I when I'm scrolling up, the uh, reviews should also scroll up. So for that, I have created this screen where there are all the reviews um, and these are very simple to build actually. There's just an image, a text, uh, name text, uh, whatever the person has written on it. So and, and I have just copied the entire uh, component multiple times, change the name and the photograph and that's how you get the reviews. Now, now we want them to be scrollable. So I've added a bunch of them. If you see they're flowing out of the artboard. What I've done is I've grouped them together and once I have grouped them together, I'll give it clip component. So if you don't know how clip component works, you can just Google it or you can watch my previous video where I explained how can you do clip component and do the scrolling bit. So once you do clip, clip component of this group, you can go in the prototyping mode and give it like a vertical scrolling. So as soon as you give it like a vertical scroll, uh, this entire thing should become vertical scrollable. And that's where our interaction will work when I'm moving my, when I'm scrolling my finger over the book, the uh, entire review should also scroll up. So if I show you here, yes. So if I show you here, see, so when I'm scrolling up and down, the reviews are also scrolling up. Great. Now what I also want is when I'm giving a thumbs up, a like should also appear on the screen. So for that, what I have done is, um, I've duplicated this frame three to frame four. And I have added a heart icon in center for it. Uh, now what I have done is I just copied this heart from this artboard, artboard four. Okay. This heart icon and I'll place it on the frame three, which is the previous frame actually. And I'll give it a width and height of one. Okay. And I'll give it a zero pass through so that it's not visible. Okay. And now what we also want to do is we want to patch these two frames um, with again on click because we are keeping everything on click because we want all the triggers to exactly match my tapping and my interaction with the book. So everything is on click. So on click it will move to this one smart animate. So when we do a smart animate this heart will pop up because here it is uh, almost negligible in size. And then again you do smart animate ease out and 300 milliseconds. So that's the core thing for this video, entire video is that you need to add smart animate to everything. Now just let's quickly preview how it looks like. Okay. So if you see the heart icon came up and uh, it became big. Now I was also what I want is that when the heart icon is done, it should also give me a confirmation that, Hey, this book is added to your wishlist. So what I've done is I have created a small pill added to wishlist and it is right now on frame four. And it's actually out of the artboard, so it's not visible. And I have also duplicated this entire thing in the new one uh, and created a new artboard where this added to wishlist is in frame. Now here, what we want is we don't want this to be on tap. We want the heart to disappear automatically and this added to wishlist toast coming in automatically. So what I've done is I've added, I've linked both of these two as after delay, I've given like a 10 millisecond delay so that the previous heart animation is complete. 
and then uh, to the next screen by 300 milliseconds okay and here i have also done is i have given the heart as zero capacity so that it's disappearing automatically and i have also duplicated this again where i moved right to wishlist out of the frame so that um, once i to wishlist the toast goes back automatically right and i'll show you what i have done so from frame 5 to frame 6 it's again after delay automatically 800 millisecond i want it to stay there for some time so that the user can see it and then i want it to disappear automatically again smart animate 600 millisecond it will automatically ease out so let's quickly view the entire thing entire interaction right now um, so it's here i'll go back to the first screen clicking okay appears very nice next is reviews that are coming up now i can scroll them up perfect clicking heart icon comes added to wish list option comes and goes back so perfect so this is the entire interaction that we want now guys when uh, now we want to record this interaction because we want a video out of it and we want to patch this video and my base video in after effects now the problem is whenever you export a video the background of that video is never transparent it is some color right you will never get a transparent background in a video so to uh, solve that problem we need after effects that's why we are using after effects so what we are going to do is we are going to add a green background to all of these so i'll select uh, all of these frames and we are going to remove that green background from after effects in after effects actually come here and i'll select like a very vibrant sort of a green like this it doesn't matter guys what green you are choosing but um, need, needs to be a really vibrant green so that we can pick this color in after effects and remove it um, i have chosen this green just make sure that none of your interface elements is in green so if you see everything in what I, I have chosen is either white or yellow don't choose anything close to green because then after effect will not be able to remove it properly okay so now we have made everything green and let's quickly see how it looks like so it looks like this everything the background is green and it works the way that we wanted uh, guys also make sure so to record this entire video what you need to do is if you are on mac you can record this entire video by using quicktime player uh, as if you are on windows and you can re record it via a site called loom it gives you an option to screen record um, you can also download third party apps there are a lot of apps that lets you screen record so we just want to record the screen so um, what you need to do is start the interaction from start uh, take your phone wherever you have created that video see this video and time the click interaction here according to the video so whenever you are tapping just make sure you are also tapping it here so that this interaction is in sync with your main interaction so the way i recorded it is via seeing it on my phone and as soon as i am tapping and i am doing something on the book i am tapping the trigger here i am hitting the click trigger here and then recording the entire video okay so that's how you record the video once you record the video you will get something like this so you will get a video like this so if you see everything is there uh, it's a green screen video so obviously we have added the green screen and the reason to add these green screen is that we want to remove that in after effects so everything is looking green we will remove it actually so yeah so i just screen record this entire interaction of figma and uh, now we have two videos with us one is basically this and the other one is base so now let's quickly hop on to after effects and see how to do that okay so let's drag this uh, two videos in our main interaction so let's first drag our base video and we'll rename it to base so that we know where it is so we'll call it base video this is the same video that i've shown you uh, where i'm just dragging the book and now what i want is i also want to drag my interface video the green screen video that i have created and i'll also drag it here above the main layer so if you see uh, it's quite big right now uh, what i'll do is i'll just reduce the size from the bit now the screen is too big and it has the green thing now in after effects what we want to do is we want to remove this green screen so let's first resize this screen so i'll select this screen and okay. and we want it to be near the book so just make it a little bit more smaller yeah something like this great uh, let me show you again how it looks like 
So it's now right here alongside with the book. Uh, now we don't want this green uh, patch to appear. So what to, what we need to do is first go to your uh, right side panel and there's something called effects and presets there. Click on it and select key light. So if you as soon as you write key, you see key light 1.2. Just drag that key light effect onto the prototype layer. Okay. Now in the left hand side, you will see key light presets. So what you need to do is we need to select a gray screen color and in our case it's green. So just select this dropper tool, come here and click on this green color. So as soon as you click on this green color, you see that green color has disappeared. Now our video is transparent and that's the beauty of After Effects. So now we have a transparent video on top of our brace video, right? So let me just quickly show you how the entire thing looks like now. So it takes some time to render first, so things will be smaller. I'll just speed up this bit. So guys, uh, if you see, both the videos looks perfectly great. Uh, the only problem is now the videos are a little bit out of sync. So what we can do is that's really simple. In the main timeline menu, if you see, we have both the timelines here. Now what we need to do is we just need to move the timeline the top prototype timeline a little bit uh, fine tune it a little bit actually uh, you can just move it the left and right the entire timeline and we need to just fix it at my uh, hand gestures on the book so i'll just move it here really quickly i'll move this uh, blue needle this blue needle shows you the current position and at this stage when i am just okay at this stage when i'm just tapping so at this particular stage at this stage is where we want the prototype screen to appear so i just select the prototype timeline a little bit okay and we just want it to appear at this particular moment so we want this to appear at this particular moment and this is how it will look like and we'll move it forward and when i move it backward now i want my hand also to sync with it so let's see if it's synced or not by doing that bit. I'll just quickly move it. Let me just see. So at this stage, I start uh, doing the scroll. Okay, so I just need, so that's happening a little bit faster. What I'll do is I'll just move it a little bit. Yes. So at this stage is where we see if my hand is synced with the entire thing. Great. So guys, this is how you do the syncing part. Uh, this is how you do the entire syncing part. Uh, now, if you see uh, the interface looks perfectly fine on this one. So we don't have to do anything further than this. Um, what I like to do a little bit here is that interface is slightly moved out of the screen because it's slightly more distance from the previous one. If I show you here, when the book was in front, uh, the distance was lesser actually uh, between the interface and the book whereas when the book is uh, flipped up the, uh, the distance between the two interface and the book is more the reason being I place the book slightly far away from the interface so what we need to do is we can do that fixing as well really quickly so I'll go to that place when I'm flipping the book and this is where I'm flipping the book and making it straight now uh, what I want is at this particular time when this transition is happening yes here what i want to do is i just want to move this interface a little bit so i'll just go here select this arrow and go to transform and then here's an option bunch of options basically anchor point position so i just want to change the position the x position of this entire thing so i want to move it like a little bit closer to the interface so i'll just select the x interface and move it here and that's it guys uh, this is how you create your inter entire interface right from now on here the interface will be closer to the book and that's it if you want you can scale it a little bit i think we can scale it a little bit i'll just select it and we can move it a little bit here perfect so guys now you can hit the export option you can go to file and you can just basically export this entire thing you have an export option here. 
and once you export this you will get a nice video with both your interface as well as a base video combined together with no green screen so guys i hope you like this video in this video if you see my background was relatively very stable uh, even the book movements were very limited so that i was able to achieve this with a very simple uh, removal of green screen background but uh, in more realistic scenario where everything is moving a person is moving the subject is moving the interface is moving uh, we need to do a, a lot more things where we use camera tracking as well as motion tracking in after effects to make sure the interface stick to the object of usage right so uh, we'll let in uh, so i am not taught that part in this video because it become too much for you to do it because there are so many things involved but in upcoming videos where we'll increase the complexity of the prototyping a little bit more i'll teach you how to basically uh, do camera tracking and plane tracking and motion tracking where you can stick the interface to a moving subject and create even more realistic prototypes so guys that's it for today uh, do subscribe to the channel hit here uh, give me a like if you like this entire video let me know in comments what you want to see next and i'll be bringing more and more such videos for you in my upcoming videos so guys stay tuned stay healthy and i'll see you in my next video bye bye